What's up? My name's Ike. And I'm Max. We're the two founders of Bantam Planet. Uh, we hosted a Kickstarter about a year and a half ago. And that Kickstarter helped us produce this game right here, which is Phantom West. So I'm the designer. Max is the head of marketing and operations. And together, we made this with Panda Game Manufacturing. So this is the first pre-production copy in existence. And I'm honored to hold this in my hand. Max and I have played this three or four times over the last two, three weeks since receiving it. We played it with his girlfriend, Tati, my mom, my mom's boyfriend, Charlie, and we're having a great time playing it. Even though I've played it probably 73 times by now, um, the 74th, 5th, 6th, and 7th with all my best friends and family were unreal. So I cannot wait for y'all to receive this, and let's, let's do a little unboxing. I'm not going to ruin anything for y'all. Um, I want it to be a surprise, but let's just go through the components real quick. Uh, keep in mind, this cool-ass backdrop we got here. Um, we're sitting in a bar in Paris. So we're on a little Bantam tour. We're going to go say hi to all of our artists in the UK, um, some of our artists in Asia. And uh, we're going to have a great time doing it and show them our gratitude for helping us make this. So that's where we are at. And let me just open this box. So I'm going to show you the cover. You got the four deadly strangers, one on each side. And then also right there. So based on how you want to put it on your shelf, you can show off your favorite character, you know, or your least favorite, depending on what kind of person you are, what you prefer. This is the first thing you'll see. I'm not going to read it for y'all. I'm actually going to block it from your view because I want this to be a surprise. And then this is what we call the welcome sheet. On the back side is a fake newspaper. Oh, oh. And you'll be able to read that later. Well, did I say fake? I meant fake. It's actually from the planet of Bantam. Uh, they, they sent it to us, and we're just publishing it on Earth for them. So... You got the two field manuals. So you have your standard field manual. This helps you with like the base game mode, the standard game mode. Um, and then once you're ready to progress, you move to the technical field manual or the advanced technical manual, excuse me. So SFM, standard field manual, ATM, advanced technical manual. And I named those after uh, all the doctrine from back when I was in the army. And they actually kind of look like old school army documents you know old school army doctrine so you'll be able to enjoy all i think at this point it's 44 pages of rules but don't worry it's digestible so good luck all right all of these do not come with the game uh i went out and for like 10 20 cents i bought these burlap sacks you can go do it at any craft store we might make some available in the future but for now, this is just my own little house rule, my own little house upgrade. And I even drew all this little stuff on Sharpie, or in Sharpie, on the bag. So you can see, we got the bank. We got the big old judge bag. Yes. The judge. And then we got the four deadly strangers. So the way I like to package it um, is by character. So you can hand each player their preferred character or whatever they choose and they can just dump those out and start setting up. So what they start to set up are the player boards. So as you can see, these are dual layer die cut. You can see it's two layers of paperboard, cardboard, with a nice, you know, matte finish, uh, linen finish on top, uh, sheet, and then you can see each slot for all the cubes are punched through. So this side is punched and this side is punched as well. And believe it or not, getting both sides punched and both sides printed, um, it costs us a bit extra. But we, we want to make sure y'all get the best product possible. So, you know, even if we're cutting our own bottom line down a bit, um, 
making this as best as we can is what matters. So you have Levi's, you have Mika's, the thief, and you can even see their personal affects on each. Here, let me go back to Levi's and show you real quick. Personal affects, the gunslinger, Mika's, the thief. Don't let her in your house. Um, then you have Jericho's, the merchant. He's rich. And then you have Hannah's, the arsonist. I'm surprised this whole thing isn't burned, you know, at least yet. Maybe after an hour of gameplay it might be. But yeah, so you have all four of those. And that is getting put off to the side. The way I like to package the game up, <clears throat> even though it takes a little bit of un undoing when you're done or when you're ready to set up, uh, I just group all cards by like size. So you have American Mini size, 44 by 67 millimeters. You got standard poker size, which is 63 by 88 millimeters. And then you have tarot size or tarot. Uh, not sure which one it is, but uh, you have tarot size, which is 70 by 120 millimeters. So I just package those together, put little rubber bands. I'm going to make sure rubber bands are included in all y'all's games for that purpose. All right. Or you can use them to like tie back your hair or something or like close a bag with some leftovers in it. All right. So here are the terrain tiles. So these are 230 by 230 millimeters and which is roughly nine inches by nine inches. And you have the town, you have the plains. You have the wetlands, the wilderness, and the mountains. This place is real cold. You're going to get one frostbite every night you spend here, not in shelter, not in a, ca a campsite, a cave, or a cabin that you build yourself. So this is one of the most treacherous places in Bantam West. But each one of these tiles has a day mode, which is A. You see A down there. And then... It also has a night mode. So not only does the artwork change from day to night, the lighting changes, but also the game's difficulty. So it increases the amount of enemies that exist on the board. It increases uh, the difficulty of certain skill checks that you need to do. Let's say you want to jump over this river right here. You know? Okay, at night, well, not that one. Let's do this one. You want to jump that? Okay. It bumps up to a seven. You know, it's darker. It's harder to see. So the only players who are going to be playing at night are more experienced players. And that's why the nighttime game mode is called Masters of Chaos. So you have to experience the chaos of playing this game during the day. And then you can upgrade to night once you're a Master of Chaos. And by the way, this sucker right here, I'm going to... Be sure to update that to a 7, because that's incorrect. But that's why we do a PPC. That's why we do a pre-production copy and a whole review of every single component in this thing. There's hundreds of tokens, hundreds of cards, a lot of cardboard, a lot of paper. So Max, Tatiana, myself, we reviewed every single piece, and we approved the ones that are good. We made changes to the ones that are not good. And even still, when you get it, keep in mind this is first edition. This is, let me show you. This is actually, ooh, look at that. This is actually a Kickstarter edition. So I wanted to put that on the box so the backers who entrusted us with this project and with their money and their support, um, their box is forever, forever scarred, forever marked. You know, which might actually make this a bit more valuable in time when we do a second edition or any further reprints. You know, this this will mean something. Could you so you told us about this. Could you explain what that is? Absolutely. Okay, so we got the Kickstarter edition. We got our company's logo, which actually I have on my head right here. <laughs> and then we have this. So this was a logo that... I hand sketched and then our amazing graphic designer, Chachuan, uh, he made into a reality. So it's actually a little dude diving into a table and the table is like a vortex swirling. 
So he's getting sucked in. I don't think he's ever going to be able to come out, you know? It's that fucking, oh, oh, excuse me. It is that immersive. But the ITS stands for Immersive Tabletop Sim. And you can go on our website, go on our blog. Um, there's a few forums on BGG that talk about ITS. I've commented on it a few times. But ITS was uh, a term that I wanted to create to encapsulate what this is, what this experience is. Um, I made this game selfishly because I wanted to play this game. And I couldn't really find another game out there that kind of captured this spirit. Um, so I, I designed a lot of the aspects of this game after one of my favorite video game genres, which is immersive sim. Uh, so like Deus Ex, Dishonored, System Shock, a uh, little bit of Bioshock, you know, all, all those games. I, I love the fact that there's emergent gameplay that arises while you're playing, things that even the game designer didn't intend, which even in our last play session a week ago, Max and Tati were pulling off stuff I didn't know was possible. And some of it was game-breaking, so we fixed it. Some of it was game-breaking and fun, so we kept it. But that's, that's the kind of stuff for you to figure out while playing. So this is pretty much the whole thing. Can you show us some of the components from either the judge or any <coughs> Jericho, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. I could do a... I think I heard someone say <gasps> Jericho. Jericho, please. <clears throat> All right. So let's just let's bring out... Here, do you want to come around this way and go yeah. up over the shoulder? So... Let's just dress up Jericho's player board and let's see how fast I can do this. All right. So the hardest thing is undoing this knot. That's the hardest thing. And then from here, just the second hardest thing is getting it out of the bag. Keep in mind, these are aftermarket parts. We didn't design these. These are like 20 cents. Like I said, there we go. Okay. So you take Jericho's player board. Set aside his combat cards, which are custom to him. You can place these in any order, but boom. These fit nice and neat into the slots, and the slots help retain your positioning and your level and all that stuff. You take all of these. These are called skill cubes. These black ones are called limiters. You got dice. These are custom designed dice by us. They're two-tone marble dice with white pips, uh, 14 millimeter in size. So that's our custom dice. And each player has their own matching color. So we're gonna take his cabin cards, put them in line with the cabin ticket with the cabin pieces on the ticket. This right here is a little preview of the terrain upgrade kit. So each character has a terrain upgrade, a cabin, uh, rather than you know the standard. Uh, this costs extra. This was an add-on during the Kickstarter, but the model here actually matches one for one the model on each of their player boards. So that is pretty neat. A little bit more immersion. Um, and for those who missed out on that, that will be made available down the road. Um, but once again, it's an add-on. It, it doesn't come with the base game. So you have your check marks. That is for your character to check off things as they do them on the to-do list. You have your grit tokens. So on one side, coffee. And on the other side, tobacco. So let me just go ahead and put these on the grit ticket. And that's how much energy you have per turn, per day phase. You got the doors for the cabins, so one side is locked and the other side is unlocked. And if you look real close, you can actually, I don't know if you can tell on this video, but one side, the artwork, yeah, you can't see too much behind the graphical overlay, but one side is locked and one side is actually unlocked on the artwork itself. So you put that off to the side. All right. You take this, so the... Uh, inventory card or the cargo catalog just put that right off to the side that's how the character they have a note, little notebook where they keep track of the resources they have the cash how many heads how many items they have and then lastly so lastly here's Jericho's character card character card goes in the character slot 
However, to set the game up, you flip it. And along the bottom, there's the stats. So the stats are actually in order from left to right, matching the player board from left to right and top to bottom in that order. So let's go through and let's set up Jericho's real quick. You got four, Vigor, and Vigor requires a limiter. So all of this is in the rule book as well. Speed is next. Jericho starts with three speed. Speed also has a limiter. Next, willpower. His willpower is at neutral. Agility is one. Let me grab the rest of these. Strength is four. Malice is three. Woof. Sneak is two. Persuasion is four. And then wisdom is one. All right. These two are kept off to the side until you score your first game winning point. And then the second one is kept off to the side until you reach 10. At which point, once you score the next point, you would put it in milestones, marking you've reached 10 once. Meaning this would be 11 points. This would be 21, 31, 41. So technically with this system, you can score up to 50 points. Now, the highest game mode scoring requirement, or I guess uh, success criteria, success conditions, win conditions, uh, the highest currently is 15 with Masters of Chaos. But with this, we're future-proofing um, because Phantom West was designed to be a system that can be expanded upon. And not for the sake of making more money, because that does not mean anything when it comes to all of this. Money's not a driving factor. It couldn't be. This is too much work. It's too hard to do just for cash. The reason is I want to build a world starting with Phantom West that you can mess around in, you can do whatever you want, and you can be whoever you want. You know, And I want that for me. And as a result, I also want that for you. So hopefully in the future, you'll be able to play games up to 30 points, 40 points, um, and there'll be action-packed fun games that don't just take place in the mountains, wilderness, wetlands, and the plains, but also other parts of the world. So we're working on that right now in the background behind this, as this is our number one priority. So we'll be getting this out to you quarter one, uh, 2023 and I can't wait to talk to y'all again so thank you thank you guys I hope my camera man wasn't too bad if you have any questions let us know in the comments below and we'll get back to you and if you like this video style let us know too because it's out of our comfort zone but I think I did pretty good um, I think you should comment some positive stuff so he makes more videos and we look forward to talking to you soon bye bye, -bye. see you soon one take, one take, one take. You just did a 20 minute one take. <laughs> <laughs> oh.